Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off with Microsoft and AMD, as there is a report floating around on the internet that Microsoft are going to be requesting that AMD provide the APUs inside its Surface Laptop 3. At least that's according to the website WinFuture, who according to them, a series of corresponding entries in a non-public database of European retailers, end quote, hints that Microsoft are planning to launch a Surface Laptop 3 with both a 15-inch display as well as an AMD CPU. Although the specifics on the CPU itself, along with other specs, weren't exactly elaborated upon. Most likely, this would be Picasso-based. Um, and the reason that it probably would be Picasso is that we've actually seen Microsoft making a prototype of Picasso. That's according to Petri. Uh, they said that earlier this year. And I believe that there was another report as well that Microsoft would be using uh, Picasso uh, for the Surface Laptop 3. Rainier is a kind of distant possibility, but most likely Microsoft's products will ship before Rainier, so that probably wouldn't work time-wise. Now, this is interesting because of a couple of reasons, the first of which is the obvious one, AMD are getting yet more support from the industry at large, this time from the APUs, which I think most would agree that it's not that the APUs are bad or anything, but compared to, let's say, the Ryzen 2000 or 3000 CPUs, for example, they haven't really seen as much support in the industry. That's definitely a good thing for AMD, although I, I guess technically the APUs, you could also say consoles, but you kind of know what I mean. And we've also seen a prototype uh, Surface device which was using a Snapdragon chip from Qualcomm. Now we know Microsoft have been pushing to support ARM with Windows 10, but this basically means that they've settled on using AMD for whatever reason. Perhaps they got a really good price from AMD or whatever other reasons. And it looks like anyway, Microsoft will not be asking Intel to provide the chips. Then again, it's also possible they could have models with both Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs at the end of the day until we see the products launch, well, we can only speculate. The next piece of news, though, does concern Intel stuff. Actually, there's a couple of pieces of news concerning Intel, and one of them... Each and every year in technology, there seems to be a new buzzword. And in 2019, I would say that the buzzword is ray tracing. So, what happens if you take World of Tanks and Intel's One API? <laughs> You probably guessed it. You get ray tracing support for World of Tanks, but this is very different because you, rather than relying on a Turing class GPU from NVIDIA, this can be achieved on any DirectX 11 capable graphics card and it is agnostic. So it doesn't matter if it's an AMD GPU, for example, a Radeon RX 480, whether it's a GTX 980, or whether it's an iGPU from Intel themselves, this can run. And that's really cool. So let's take a look at how this was achieved. Because with one API, Wargaming, in collaboration with Intel, have actually enabled ray tracing in World of Tanks, and all you need is a DirectX 11 class GPU. And this does, from what I'm reading here, it might change, it does seem to be hardware agnostic. So, for example, if you have an AMD Radeon GPU, then you're good to go. If you have a Pascal-based NVIDIA card, you're good to go. Well, you get the point by now. I'm not going to continue. Um, and this is a technology called Encore RT. It does have a few limitations. The biggest one is that it will only work with vehicles in direct sunlight. So it is more limited than, let's say, Turing is capable of. So Jensen Huang and others of the NVIDIA faithful may poke it with a stick and say, yeah, well, that's not as impressive as uh, what hardware ray tracing is capable of with Turing. And if you've seen games like Control, you have to admit it looks bloody beautiful. Yes, it does like kick the frame rate in the shin a bit, but 
well, it's hard to deny it looks amazing. Um, and so this isn't quite that, but it's still really cool that all you need is a DirectX 11 capable GPU. And this is all thanks, as I just mentioned, uh, to Intel's One API rendering toolkit. So if you're unfamiliar with what One API is, I have done a deeper breakdown of this previously, but just as a quick refresher, it's essentially a toolkit which is designed by Intel to work across a myriad of different products. So FPGAs, GPUs, CPUs, and basically uses a single API for developers. So it's much easier, in theory anyway, to be able to create very interesting and powerful uh, techniques across different uh, different pieces of hardware. So uh, I'm going to read out a quote from Wargaming.net on their own official website, worldoftanks.eu. We are continuing to improve core, the graphics engine of World of Tanks, in the upgraded, updated version, excuse me, of the core engine includes two important technological features, concurrent rendering and support for more soft and realistic shadows on tanks thanks to ray tracing technology. With the introduction of our ray tracing technology developed at Wargaming and in close collaboration with Intel, we can recreate the main actors of the game in higher quality, the smallest detail, you know what, all of that is just uh, PR speak. Uh, but they also note that ray tracing technology will work on all graphics cards that support DirectX 11 API and higher, but only for intact vehicles that are in direct sunlight. So if you blow a vehicle up or it's in the shadows, it won't so much do the working. You can also enable or disable this function in the game settings. And the support for brand new shadows on tanks will be up will be added in an upcoming update for World of Tanks after the tests have been complete. There's also a few comparison sliders on the website dom1n.com, so you can see the difference between the shadows enabled and of course disabled. They are definitely fairly subtle, and once again, to reiterate, they are not as profound as something like hardware ray tracing from Turing, but that's not the point, of course. With Turing, you need, well, to buy a Turing card, whereas this basically could run on a turnip. It can run on, you know, a lower-end GPU just fine. It's going to be fascinating to see what the frame rate difference is and what's going to happen, for example, on uh, CPU usage. So what type of CPU do you need to really take advantage of this? For example, if you have a 9900K, Will you see a frame rate dip compared to like an 8700K? You get my point. Uh, so yeah, this is also going to be fascinating uh, in the future because next year, Generation 12 graphics is, of course, XE from Intel. And we know very little about XE. There's a lot of speculation. Uh, and there's a couple of leaks that have been somewhat scrubbed from the internet, but you can still find them, uh, including from a couple of... Uh, guys before they became employees of Intel. And essentially, there is some mixed uh, mixed rumors whether we're going to see hardware ray tracing on XE or not, but it's possible that with one API, we could see some really close uh, collaboration, I guess, I suppose, between the CPU and GPU. So it's going to be really fascinating to see what Intel do there. I'm really supportive of anyone who gives uh, NVIDIA I run for the money in the graphics department. I don't have anything against NVIDIA, but let's face it, it's definitely good that we have uh, RDNA, or I guess you could also say Navi RX 5700 series, because obviously that has pushed NVIDIA to release Super. So with hopefully Intel releasing excellent products as well, it's only going to be a good thing. And the next piece of news concerns Tiger Link U. This is one of the smaller bits of news, but I want to cover it anyway because it's confirmation of a roadmap, and that always makes me happy. Credit to InstLatX64 on Twitter for discovering this. And if you take a gander at the Intel graphics notes on Intel GFX CI. Dot zero one dot org, you can see in the patch notes that we do have some information concerning Intel's uh, Willow Cove slash Gen 12 GPU, but furthermore, not only do we have four cores, eight threads of the CPU, 
but it also lists 12 megabytes of level 3 cache. This seems to fit in very nicely with what we saw from a CPU core roadmap from Intel in the architecture day. Uh, with Sunny Cove, they are pushing single thread performance, new ISIS, scalability is improved, and with Willow Cove, and it lists that there is a cache redesign, new transistor optimizations, and quote, new security features. And then the architecture after that is Golden Cove, which once again pushes single thread performance as well as artificial intelligence and performance, network slash 5G and security features. So as a quick reminder, uh, Sunny Cove is what we have now. Um, with the 10th generation of CPUs Ice Lake, and then Willow Cove will launch after that. And finally, I want to bring your attention to a very interesting interview on the website semiengineering.com. And the interview is called NVIDIA's Top Technologist Discuss the Future of GPUs. This is a very recent interview, it was a couple of days ago that it was posted. And it's very interesting because we actually see mention here of chiplets. So we all know what chiplets are by now, particularly if you've been watching the channel for some time. If you're unfamiliar, it's basically a bunch of smaller components, chiplets, come together to form a larger whole. For example, in the case of uh, Ryzen 3000, you have a couple of chiplets, you have up to two CPU chiplets which can come together to give you 16 core for the Ryzen 3000 and then you add an IO die on top of that and that basically gives you the Ryzen 3950X. Well, it does when the processor launches. But chiplets aren't 100% new and they are definitely not something that AMD have been studying in isolation. Indeed, you might recall that there was a team of researchers at NVIDIA that have actually been uh, studying the idea of what is possible with chiplets on a GPU versus a monolithic GPU. Uh, back in the day, it actually demonstrated what a 16NM 32 module GPU prototype could achieve versus uh, a discrete graphics card, a, a typical monolithic die. And According to Bill Daly, who is NVIDIA's chief scientist, NVIDIA have actually, quote, de-risked the technology of chiplets. I'll read this out verbatim. This gives us a bunch of technologies on the shelf that at some point in time, if it becomes economically the right thing to do, assemble GPUs from multiple chiplets, we basically have de-risked the technology. So it's now a tool in the toolbox of a GPU designer. They were then asked by the website semiengineering.com, where is the crossover point? We're now at 7nm, heading down to 5nm. Where do you guys hit in terms of chiplets? And they just add that we're not hit it yet. Um, it's a very interesting interview, so I'll link it in the description of the video. And I'd encourage you to read it if you are interested in chip design, because it's kind of cool. Uh, but this... For those who aren't interested in chip design and just want the too long didn't read, uh, this basically tells us that NVIDIA know how to create the chiplets, they don't feel it's a risk to do it, but they just don't feel it's the right strategy yet, which is obviously the complete reverse of what uh, AMD are doing with, well, about every product ever. I'm pretty sure that they're going to start making staplers at the company out of chiplets at some point or another, and uh, when, you, when you become an employee of AMD, you need to start putting the, uh, the stapler together in, like, uh, Lego form. But being serious for a moment, this is obviously a very different strategy, what NVIDIA have got. And it's going to be fascinating to see what the crossover point is. It basically, from what we're seeing here, it essentially means that we're not going to be seeing Ampere use chiplets, which was never the rumor anyway. Uh, so I'm not surprised that Ampere is going to use chiplets and who knows what form Ampere is going to take. And if someone in the comments writes GPU, you get a medal. But no, seriously, we don't know if it's going to be just aiming at uh, HPC users or whether gamers are going to get Ampere or what. So it's going to be really interesting to see what NVIDIA does with its uh, GPU roadmap. Because at this point, we actually know a lot less about uh, NVIDIA's GPUs than what we do both AMD and even Intel's, actually. Which is kind of weird. 
because a lot of stuff for Turing got leaked kind of early. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. So if you have enjoyed it, click the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel if you've not already done so. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.